This is a uh, instructional video on how to install uh, flash glazing into a mainline uh, LMS Stania full brake uh, van, also known as a BG, depending on where you find it on the internet. Um, I was not supposed to uh, have this actual uh, van or coach, whatever you want to call it, as I have a um, one of the new Hornby double O, that's the die cast, um, Duchess of Athol, and mighty fine loco it is too, and I realise oh, I've got the loco and I've got absolutely no rolling stock for it to pull, not the correct ones anyway. So I decided to go onto the internet uh, and see what was available in um, preferably Hornby period three uh, uh, stock as I assume they will be more recent and of a higher uh, quality, as in the amount of detail they have. So I found one going nice and cheap. Yeah. There, there's an error in the way. Uh, and I thought that's all right, about 16 quid for something that normally costs about 40 quid. So, oh, that's good. Bought that. It, it, it was a buy now type thing. When it arrived, ah, it's second hand. It's got scratches on it. It's not in the box they showed on on the film or on the internet and on the bottom it says mainline now well, that means it's probably from the 1980s i would have thought anyway after a bit of a uh talking to the bloke who sold it to me i decided to keep it he gave me a little bit of a refund because i got it for a tenner in the end but it's actually quite good the, the detail on it is it's certainly good enough for, to, to be when viewed when actually going around a layout and the roof vents and all that are extremely good, which uh, various forum reports says that the main lines were very good and set a new standard back in the day. But I thought, well, I can um, I can actually improve on this and bring it up to a little bit more up to date. Uh, so I decided to start. I'll start with um, the ends were painted red, which they shouldn't. Can you see that? Which they shouldn't have been. I don't think all the other uh, passenger stock is painted black. And the Hornby one is painted black, where it has the, um, what do you call that bit, the corridor connection. Can you see that? Okay, so I masked it up and did that in uh, Halford's satin black. That seemed to be okay. Uh, the door handles of various types are all painted red, so I've done those in gold paint. Uh, there, 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 and there. So they look a little bit better. And the actual chassis, which is all plastic, there it is over here. I don't know if you can see that all right, yeah. All right, so I thought, well, we don't want these mainline couplings, they're a bit chunky, but they work, but they're a bit chunky. So I thought, well, I don't certainly don't want plastic wheels either. So put some Backman wheels on, that was actually quite difficult because the uh, mainline ax axles are 25 millimeters long and all the standard ones now are 26 so i put in the brass bearings and couldn't spread the things the the sides wide enough so in hornby style had to file i don't know if you can see that but where's, where's my cocktail stick i don't know if a close-up will work better hang on it's uh, disappeared there's a groove there to allow it for the axles to go in so it's got metal wheels and also i thought well what could go the whole hog and put in nem couplings proper nem couplings as with the back i thought the easiest way to do this just turn rather than hack that about and ruin the original coupling i'll just turn it around and use the other end and glued in a bit of there's quite a bit of filing and hacksawing going on and put in the slaters um where is it there you go that's the slaters bit that's the NEM, that little bit there, and that's the Backman's short coupling. So that seems to work okay. So I'm pleased with that. Then I thought, ah, it's got it's got uh, old-fashioned windows. I wonder if anybody on the internet does flush-fitting glazing. Now I remember there was a company, saw it in Hornby magazine, who did the... Um, the airfix hornby whatever it is um auto coach great western auto coach so i went found that company it's called sure plan 
and he does laser glaze. Oh, as soon as I saw laser, I thought that's going to be accurate then. If it's computer controlled rather than some old moulded tool. So I sent off for that and also noticed he did um, one of these coaches, which I had to ask him because he sold it as BG, I think. And does it mean the same as a full brake? And he says, yes, it does. And I me measured it from the main line one that you sent me an email of. Oh, wow, that's good then. That, that will fit lovely then. So that's what I got. So I got one for my auto coach, which is this. You see that? And these come on a fret with shiny plastic, just as they are, as it comes. You cut them out, and that's the end of it. Now, one of the reasons for doing this video was I spotted on the on the that the um, the ones for this uh, BG stroke full brake coach thing, a main line even though he's called it a govin on this which is not what's mentioned on his website come as solid little cut out blocks of plastic the same shape as a window see that hmm i thought that's quite different and they're really thick unlike the auto coach ones i also noticed that um the um the surface was not clear like it was on that um, auto coach one quite different it's got a misty look about it so that's strange it wasn't till I looked very close up sideways I could see that there's a, a protective film either side uh, so look, this video is really prompted by how many people buy these things and install them and put up with what they think is a frosty glass effect not realizing that that is a little tiny uh, piece of clear film and here's the ones I took off earlier from the main window this is a door window by the way where are we there we are and they all peel off and there's one there they sort of come off both sides so I thought right I better point this out to people because the man himself at Shore Plan he doesn't point it out in the instructions how to do it so how you do this let's see if you can see what I'm doing just with your fingernails, assume you don't bite them down to the quick. Just start it off a little bit, and you get an edge. I hope this works. A decent pair of rounded tweezers that aren't sharp. Grab hold of it. And it just peels away, see? So, there's one on each side. I'm not going to peel it all away, because I'm not. the doors have the... Well, the uh, security bars, which is, which is what the next bit I'm going to be showing you. I'll put that away now. Now I've shown you that you take that off. So what I've done, all these, where's my originals? Where's it gone? There it is. As in the main line and the Hornby ones, they have all these bars. Which is, uh, This is how the, the, the original coach comes with the glazing, just flat against the back. Obviously not flush mounting. And it goes like that. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Right, so we've got three there, five there, three, five, and they're going a different direction. So you can only do the paint mine one direction at a time. And strangely, mainline ones have one door, both sides, that don't have anything at all. I looked at the Hornby many pictures on the internet, and the Hornby ones, I've all got bars in them, and they're not big, thick, white ones either. They're grey and thinner, which makes more sense, because these are well out of scale, practically. And... Also, the Hornby one only has two there, four there, so it's two, four, two, four, etc. So that's good because that means. So I thought, well, the Hornby one's more recent, and hopefully they've done a better job on their research and what Mainline did, which was basically a pallet toy toy. Good one, but it's still more toy than model. So I thought, I'll copy the Hornby way of doing it and have two, which is a lot easier. Two and four. So. Oh, and also while about it i'll show you a tool of how to get the if anyone is actually going to do a main line where you get these out these are not easy the glue that they used in the past was pretty damn good or bad when it comes to trying to remove it now i use a lot of dentist tools you can see them here all various uses if you get them at auto jumbles and they all have their you uh great this particular one here on that one are very good for removing o-rings anyone does cars and carburetors and classic motorbikes they're excellent for, for getting under o-rings and pulling them out their grooves uh, this one is what i use to get under the uh, under there i'll show you that in a minute 
that one's a blank one made of titanium it's a real one not, not some copy from the far east that's excellent for stirring paint and lots of other things that's a blank that they can make a tool out of but just out of interest I'm just <laughs> this is a genuine second hand one from a long time ago it's actually got an actually maker's name on it and that was used and has used been used i'll give it a good old wash to make sure for lancing boils very nice <laughs> yeah brilliant eh? right so getting back to this tool you don't want to use a screwdriver screwdrivers are too bulky will scratch they've got sharp edges this is a vic oh, god knows what this one came from it's my dad's and um he would have been 9.99 this year such as how old this is so you don't want to use that they scratch this is i don't know what quite sort of dentist tool this is i suppose it's also good for artists as a palette knife but they're nice and rounded they've got smoothest edges but they're very thin and that you get underneath there and it goes underneath and you gently gently go it goes quite a bit quite a crack you're thinking well what cracked as you can see this stuff's pretty brittle there's cracks there another one there but luckily the coach bodies of these old things are pretty robust i'm not sure the modern ones would be when you're doing this so probably all the vents would fall off but those vents are pretty well secured in there much better than the modern coaches are how they just fall out just held on with a little dob of super glue they're welded in with a hot knife by the looks of it or soldering iron anyway <clears throat> So that's what you use one of these and you leave it out slowly one, one little bit at a time making lots of cracking noises which scare you to death but you've got to do it all right so the next thing is all these windows come in you can see that yeah and i've tried them and they do fit they're a good fit as they should be if you measured it from this coach and cut it out with a laser they're going to be very similar or more or exact aren't they computer controlled like laser but the sides of each window are not square they are tapered they have what's known as it in engineering because i am a draftsman by trade um got called a draft angle on it so they, they're slight, slightly tapered things like that on the sides window edge tapered sides so you put the, the pointy side in from the inside out well, so you need to know that so you take you take all the the um protective film off the side you want to paint which is on the inside so the thin bit on the bottom of the taper is a bit that's going to go on the outside of the coach so i've taken them all off there's the heap of them there i measured across the windows to put the bars on remember there's two bars on these ones And that is five millimeters near enough by eye like that i'm not measuring it with a vernier and because there's two bars and they're properly evenly spaced across the window so you divide that by three five millimeters divided by three is 1.6666 recurring which by eye is just over half, one and a half millimeters as far as it's so using a um indelible pen ah no i've told you i've told you i've actually this is what do you call it? Um, the Tamiya masking tape stuff. Very good, this stuff. Low tack. Put it down upside down, but to hold it down, you know, some more either side to hold the, the pointy up sticky bit down to the um, cutting board thing, <clears throat> which also provides a nice straight edge. You can see, like, like this side, to line them up against, evenly spaced. So, what I've done. Got about five millimeters divided by three and at one and a half millimeter ink approximately from each side come from the that's no, nice inches from the outside in and put a dot and from this side in put a dot don't go from that side in and then another one and a half millimeters because it's not an exact it's by eye and you end up being an offset so from the outside that way outside that way about 1.6 one and a half millimeters by eye and that's more and put a dot and another one in the middle two dots and one at the end two dots so then i can lay the ruler down like that and i can draw the line with the paint 
which hopefully will work. I don't know. I assume the paint will stick to this because I have never done this before on here. Now I have done it before and hence I've got the confidence to do it is when I made this, this my previous model and can you see that? Very proud of this. First ever attempt, Gresley Teak job with lining. Not many people do that. They do the, the teak bit and then they, they wimp out on the lining. And this is a 579 pigeon van kit. And it's from, no, it used to be uh, Ch Chivers. In fact, Mr. Chivers of surname is the man still selling these things. You see him somehow always changed his name. But to get the confidence on how to do this lining, you go. You need to go and look at a web, a YouTube bloke called Mike Trice, spelled T R I C E, and look for his um, how to do li uh, lining, teak lining, and the honing of the pen to prepare the pen to do this. And it's very good. Oh, I can't, I can't complain about that. I don't know how close I can get. You see, that's not bad for a first ever attempt. Anyway, take that away. Nice kit, that. And weathered. All right. The tool to use is one of these. It's called a ruling pen. Or a lining pen. And it's originally a draftsman's tool, or architect's tool, for doing doing uh, engineering drawings before rotary and stadlery type pens were invented. We brought down pen... Well, we also use pencils. And I probably have used one of these because because I was a draftsman starting from about 1980 onwards and at school was technical drawing and um, it, it it takes paint very well now you have to buy these this is less than a tenner this is a this one is a jacquard I don't, I don't know where they come from I think they're German it's a, yeah they are jacquard there it is there's the one I use there's a number of it so take note it's less than a tenner you don't need the fancy ones this one works brilliantly okay from an art or craft shop there's you've probably got more on one or pick them up look at the ones and make sure the one the one you buy has got a nice even thin nib it's not splayed like you know like that <laughs> they're not they're nicely aligned one above the other that's what you need and then you fine tune them looking at that, that Mike Trice's uh, 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 YouTube instructions and tell you how to do it I'm not going to do that you can look there he does it all there's no point in me repeating what he says. Anyway, I've done what he says, and, and this thing works fine. So, I've already set the, the distance, and I use this as what I did my um, the Gresley Teak paint jobs, and that's the other test ones I've done. And that one was a bit cold as well. It, it likes, the, the paint likes to stick to a glossy surface, apparently. I don't know. Um, right, so here we go. Oh, when you mark things and when you line things, you look straight down. Do not st like, look at an angle from where you're, where you're sitting at an angle when you do this. You've got to look down as you'll get what's known as cosine error. And all the lines which you think of, of they are actually being at there. That one will be here because you're looking at an angle. So you'll get it completely in the wrong place. There'll be one there and one here, right on the edge. Always look straight down when you do this. All right, now this is set ooh, about, about half a millimetre or thereabouts where the... Um, the original ones, oh, they're about, I don't know, a millimetre, or 30 seconds of an inch or something. Yeah, about just under a millimetre, I'm going smaller than that, and I'm using a medium grey, not white. So, here we go. Here's my paint, already mixed up. Umbro. I might need to give it another stir, make sure it's stirred. Using this, whatever this stirry thing is. Don't need much paint to do this. In fact, you waste more when you wipe it off on a bit of tissue than you do actually on the model, which is true of most modelling exercises, I suppose. Alright, I'll need that just to test it. So I use here's the paint. Here's the, where's the, where's the camera? Mm, right where I want to work, right there. Alright, just use a cocktail stick, wooden one, dip it in. Like that, can you see? Yeah. Apply it. Run it down. It won't drip out the other side. The capillary action keeps it there. There you go, see? 
doesn't drip out the other side whether you can see or not put that out of the way give that a wipe paint out of the way cocktail stick out of the way there is paint on the outside Oop, there we are there I don't want it there so I'll just give it a wipe on the paper just leaving it on the inside of the tool there you go so, so it's, there's no, no paint on the outside either side hopefully that should work Ooh, please work oh yeah look at that it's very annoying when these things that have don't work when you're doing a video like that I'm on, I'm on paint will that work yeah look at that great lovely jubbly all right get that out of the way now i've got to do this now you think you have to put the ruler down like that because that's quite thick and that, that <clears throat> they'll go up at a slope so there'll be a little air gap underneath which i want i don't want the ruler touching the paint and when you take it away it smears it all over the place so i've got to do this for real now so let's hope it works so i'll line the dots probably do half at a time then move the ruler not try and do the whole lot in one go oh that's that's not the dinner bell that's my glasses hitting this um lighting unit as you can't see so here we go let's try and hope this works Over the edge, over the edge, like that, like that. Pick it up. Oh yeah, look at that. So far, so good. Let's do the same one. <clears throat> Might as well do it while I do it. Get fingernails underneath it and rotate it back. Not, not, not slide it. Just don't take that risk. Now, yeah, this is where you got to be careful. You don't get your thumb in it, will you? Doing the rest of it. Don't fall off the edge. Ooh. There you go, I've got plenty of paint, I think. Check it's still working. Where's that bit of cardboard? Mm. Where's it going? These enamels, they dry too quick these days. It's got to be enamel to do this. You can't do this with any other type of paint. It just dries too quick. Humbra was probably the best and slowest of the drawing of most of the enamels that I'm aware of. I suppose originally these pens were meant for ink, they weren't meant for paint. Now lift up, there we go. And the last one and here. There we go. And there's also when you put them down, these things, I forgot to tell you that, don't put your fingers on them, hold them with tweezers, peel that off, put them down, pick them up, align them. Do not pick them up with your fingers and put greasy fingerprints all over them. You can't clean them. You know, I wouldn't recommend you clean these things with um, spirit and things. Um, some of those plastics don't like it. Hence, look at this. That was cleaned with a bit of spirit after I did it. Look how misty it's gone. Too risky. Don't, you don't know what type of plastics they are. So, the whole point of that um, protective film there is to um, 
keep greasy mitts and scratches off. So there we go. I think that that's worked a treat. Now, don't leave the paint in these things for any time. Let's get a bit of tissue paper, kitchen towel, put in between, wipe it off. See the paint's gone. There we go. Just like that. I have to remember to keep looking at the viewfinder so I'll see what you can see. Am I? Don't go squeezing the pen. Do that a bit like that. And then with some terps, you know, Coleman's mustard pot. There we go. Don't open the jaws up. Leave it. Leave them at the, the setting you like. They don't need to be opened up. Okay. Be careful when you're doing this. Your bit of paper doesn't then go over all your paintwork. Does it? Clean it up. Ready to go for the next job. Okay. I shall carry the video on later. Or, or not, probably tomorrow. No, I'm not. I'm going fishing tomorrow. Yeah. Hey. Um. You've got to allow that overnight to make sure that that paint is thoroughly dry. I'm not going to touch a thing now. I might smear it. Right. The um, normal windows have now dried. And I caught one trout fishing yesterday. Not as many as I thought, but there you go. Right, here's the window. Wait for it to focus on it. Come on, there you go. Right, but that's the medium grey. So it's not too white and in your face and it's not too dark like a dark grey where you won't be able to see it anyway on the as it's not a lit internal coach and um yeah i think that's unmuted that'd be all right and actually the the spacing actually even though i said it was about 1.6 millimeters if i remember actually when i measured it it's about two so that shows you the um the ink dots weren't super accurate well, i saw it's not as good as it was Anyway, the door windows, of which there are six, and I've only put five down at the minute. I'll have to remind you how to do the peeling back of the, of the protective film. Works out, uh, and we said we do Haw uh, Hornby practice of four bars across these windows, that way. And that works out at 1.9 millimeter spacings. So that's near enough two millimeters again. I, I can't do 1.9 by eye. Especially with ink dot being probably a quarter of a millimetre wide in its own. <laughs> anyway, you're not going to get that accuracy. So, anyway, it's more for looks, isn't it? So, I've already put, put those down using this bottom one as a guide. So I remind you that the... Yeah, it's going to be difficult to see, in it? We've got that taper. And it's the wide end of the taper edges. We put the side, this side. So we... Peel, Let's get that started if we can. Yeah, come on, you. Just getting the finger in the right. Have to hold it like this. Can't get enough grip. There we go. Let's start it right. Now you can see that edge. There, see it coming off. Oops. Ping right off. Now, I'm not going to touch that sur surface on it. don't want greasy fingerprints, even though I have washed my hands. Though, when they're doing any modelling, I recommend you wash your hands all the time. They keep greasy finger dabs to a minimum. They cause all sorts of problems and be very noticeable on transparencies. So I line that up. Just look straight down on it. And it's handy to have, to have these gr grid lines on the cutting mat. They help, you can still see, see, see through it. So I'll give it a minor press down. Now, the way I pre press these in places is not putting me great big dabs on it and pressing them down like that. A piece of, um, uh, what do you call it, plastic hard stuff. Lay it on top, just happens to be about the right length. That's pure coincidence, I didn't plan it. And then you can press down with your fingers nice and hard without any fear of fingerprints. Or oh, skew it, there we go. Get that out of the way. Right, so we've got lines both ends as a guide for the ruler. There's a ruler. Now, what I have done, though I don't think it's necessary in this case, because remember, you've got to have that little air gap underneath there so the, 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 the paint doesn't attach itself to that and then smear. It's at an angle from here, leaning up, a bit like doing that on there, like that. 
but if you do have any lining and want to um, use your, your little metal ruler because they're quite handy is to create a little air gap between the surface it rests on and the edge you align the pen with but to put a couple of layers of insulation not insulation tape you know um, masking tape Tamiya stuff or other other brands are available but that's probably one of the best okay so I've just done it to demonstrate here while I'm talking about it I'm not, not really going to use it because I'm just leaning at an angle so let's rest that there now as before get the ruling pen lining pen whatever it's called paint's already been stirred in advance let's put it in the gap can you see In like that, you don't need much. Make sure it doesn't drip on the work off of. Right, wipe it off the stick. Let it run down to the point. Oh, there you are. Let's wipe the paint off the edge. On the outside, we don't want it on the outside at all. We just want it in internally between the blades. For want of a better name, I can, not nib, I suppose you call it. But where are we? There. You can see it? It's run down to the end. Turn over and it should be that side too. See? Good. Now, test it works again on the paper, or on carpet cardboard. Let's hope it does. If you look at that, it does. First time. It's all a good sign. Get it out of the way so you don't lean on it in your, your, that bit of hand. Don't want to do that. Well, now, as I said before, looking straight down, get the ruler up there. I've got to look right over it. I don't know what you can see of me. Right. So you look straight down at the ink lines, and let's hope this works. So far, so good. Now back to the next line. Mm -hmm. Do it again. So you only really get one attempt at this. For some reason that one's on a bit skewy. Why is that done that? Let's push it down with that now. Stay down you. But this stuff isn't as sticky as it should be. Uh, not that you notice it when it's on the coach. See that all right? Oh, you can. Now, again, with your fingertips as it's right on the edge, lift up. There you go. I can't bring the camera to, nearer to it because it's on a tripod. And it's the only camera I got. It's actually a phone. Very good one. There you go. My actual real camera is not of the age where it uploads to Google and all that stuff where. And keep me filled. So, 
that'll do for that one and I'll carry on the next part so thanks oh yeah i know i was going to show something obviously got to wipe the pen out I'll do that in a minute mate. how many times on older paintings you found the edges all bend up at the end, all go wrinkly. Where are, hang on, where are, where are, get the angle right. Oh, well, now. See, when you're levering it up, your old screwdriver or whatever you're using. Get it back, hold, make sure you hold it in the middle, not on the edge. You can flick up. Hold it down. And one of these with a soft edge, uh, a plastic edge preferably. It breaks puts it back into shape yeah, there's a few nice banging noises for you there you go I can't remember which way to tip it for the camera that way there you go nice and flat again or well, flat enough anyway so there we go a little tip there where I'm leaving all bent up at the edges and then they don't see when the next time you open the tin it's all dried out Anyway, so we wait for them to dry and then we go to the next tricky bit is actually attaching them inside the wagon itself. I have ideas on that, which is good. So, see you later. Right, the um, door windows uh, security bar paint job has now dried. Seems okay. Here's one here with the four bars. As per the Hornby one. Come on, focus. There we go. That looks okay to me. Remember, we still keep the um, protective. Come on, focus. Don't know why it's not. Mm. Must be the funny surface on it. Never mind. The the protective film on the other side. That's important for the next bit. Right now, what I'm doing. I've done two already, just as a trial, with the, I decided I won't use, the manufacturer recommends either super glue, of which there are many types, and most of them are totally unsuitable for clear glazing, because they fog, and then you've got, then you've got to try and move it, and that can r ruin the whole job. Uh, or, and I ha just happen to have some, which is very handy, is this stuff. The Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze, which is a PVA based product. I have used it to do the proper glazing and it does work. But it's also nice and just about runny enough that I go around the edge of these windows. So take note of that stuff. Most Deluxe products are very good. They all do what they say on the bottle. On the tin. So. I've glued those two in and I've picked them up by the windows on the outside with the um, protective film still in place. As you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. That little white bit there. And the idea is, when I've, I've, before I glue them in, I, I pick them, the edge off on one corner. But leave it in place so any glue can't get on that front face. But when I went, once it's done, you can then pull it off and you should have a nice perfectly clear window. With no glue smears. I'll leave that in place for the time being. Right, so that was just my trial. No point me instructing and finding that what I'm telling you is a lot of rubbish, is it? Right. As I've never done this before myself. Right, so. Each and every pane, apart from this one, and I'll do now before I forget. Just as I con constantly keep reminding you of this. Where are we? There. Get your finger now and start that corner off. Come on. So that, there you go. I'm just going to trial the zoom on this. I've never done this while I'm filming before. So if it goes blurry, I apologise. Yeah, that's not bad. There you go. Now you can see it. I can hold my hand still enough. See, it just peels away. But I don't want it peeling away, so I push it back, just leaving that little corner sticking up. The idea is, when you'll see, that I've actually put masking tape on the other side of the windows as a stop. So, because when I first trialled it, I push, I put the window in, just as, just to check the fit, 
and gave it a push and it pinged straight out the other side, hit me on the head and then landed on the carpet. Lucky, because it hit me on the forehead, I saw it where it landed. Oh, that could be a right pig. But they don't give you any spares with these things. There's the exact amount of windows. So, zoom back out again. Back to normal. There we go. Put that one back. So, so my method is to stop the windows pinging out the back and to make sure they're nice, nice and flush is to get a bit of the um, Tamiya masking tape. Come here. Stick it over the aperture. That's the correct term for a hole in a wall. Like that. Okay. Use your finger now to push it. Easy. You'll see that the edge will be darker where it's pushed down nicely. And turn it round. I don't use adhesive to put it in. I'm just using the adhesive. The, the sticky on the back of that. So can you see? Hang on, just so my hand doesn't get in the way. Right, that'd be a bit of a ooh, get the light, the light in right. Where are we? Let's plonk it in there. It's not easy. Find it like that. And to save myself putting my dirty great finger dabs on it again, which I keep pointing out. Can you see that? That's better. There we go. All right, a bit of kitchen towel. Stuff it over the end of your finger. Like that. Or you could wear gloves. So, and then squeeze. And you feel it goes, as it clicks into the, it's quite good. It's a very good fit because hence it's laser, hence the laser bit. It's quite precise. Now you want it nice and flush. For the windows, you want flush. Both sides, you can feel it. The doors are much trickier. The, the, the door aperture, I'll zoom in again. Let's have a look. Come on, zoom, 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 zoom. Where's the door? As you can see, where the window is is reset is recessed back. That makes it much more tricky. Oop, there we go. But the, but these windows, the normal windows, are basically flush this side and flush the other side. That's which makes it a lot easier. So as you can see there, that's poking out a little bit. So you've got to keep doing it till it feels flush both sides. You can use your finger now if you have to, but that's a good thing about having this tape. It won't affect, it won't mar the finish. And it's got the protective film on anyway. Which you leave on until after you've glued it. Yeah, until that feels right. Both sides. And flush this side. Can you see? There we go. Now you can see, see the... um. The uh, the bars standing out very well, so they come out quite well with that ruling pen. See, not much wrong with that. So I'm quite pleased with that. So make sure that's flush. Just, just move your finger backwards and forwards like that. If you can't feel any edges sticking up, or oh, that high gloss finish of the pane, if they're not flush, they will stand out in the light when it hits it when it's. So that one's done, I think. I'm not doing, I can leave that in, in place because it's easy removable. That's a tape. You can leave it in place if you want until you've glued it. And so it stops it moving. All right, the next one. So I'm going to do all these. I'll probably pause at some point because it will take too long on a video just me doing this. It's mainly to get the method over, isn't it, than anything else. Well, that's something he never thought about. He didn't do the a shore plan bloke, he never did the um, ducket windows. Hmm. Oh well. Can't be perfect, and they're so small anyway, you won't notice. So, I'm sure it's pressed right down. Pick up a window. Where are we? Oops, there we go, just there. That one. Plonk it in. Try to plonk it in. See, it's a tight fit, so it doesn't just. There you go. Once one end goes in, and squeeze it again with that. Should just click it. It's not going. No, it's on one end and not the other. That didn't work. So ping it out. Come on, it. Ooh, careful! I don't scratch the paint off. Mm. Tip it out. It's easy. Get out. 
try again. This is why you want that film in place. As you say, it's a tight fit. And that little tape around the edges that's, needs to go in all at the same time. That works, see? All at the same time. Yeah, that works. Not one end first. You can press it in. All right. Have a look at it in the light. It still seems to stick up this end for some reason. Well, if you're not sure, you can always just peel this back. Go on one end of the video, isn't it? Because the lens is offset. Do that and have a look. That looks all right. Yeah, it's not sticking out one end anymore than the other. See? But I'll leave it there, push it back. Oh, I'm still in zoom, I didn't realise that. Oh well, you can still see. Right, so that one's that one done. So we do a door next, and then I'll pause. And do the gluing bit. I won't do all the windows. Well, I might not pause and just do the glue the windows, yeah. Just to show show you. Right, the windows are more tricky. I'm not, not windows, I'm not talking about door windows are more tricky. So, get another bit of insulation, masking tape, keep calling it insulation tape. Right, put it over one of the doors with a recess. This is much more difficult. I push it down roughly with my hand. Now, I'm actually using this, like the rounded, where is it, where is it? The rounded blade end, which is nice and thin. Oh, no, actually, 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 I've got a special, that tool I mentioned earlier. Oh, by the way, this isn't a dentist tool. It's obviously, for, because if it's for lancing boils, it's done by a doctor, but, but it basically looks like a dentist tool. And they've all got their uses. But this one, you probably won't have one of these, but I'm using it for convenience. You can get somewhere in there, when I can see the basic profile of the window frame. You need to to find out where it is which is the bit there's a little there's a little recess a ridge what you call it just there there it is push it into that it's a bit tricky best you can anyway you don't want it, want it too tight as it won't move it's got to be able to pull into that recess Run it along like that. Same that side. You can see the, the edges move up as it moves, gets pushed downwards. That's it. Now I can push it down like that. Do for starters. Right. Now we put a door window in. Where are we? Turn it over. Make sure we're in shot. There we go. One of those ones. on you behave alright there and there this bit of paper's getting a bit knackered mm. yeah, it went in alright now you don't want it flush this side because the, all these plastics obviously is the same piece of plastic they're all based on the thickness of the normal windows I here, which haven't got a recess oh, there. Sorry, haven't got a recess because that recess, you don't want it. It end up coming flush with the outside of the door here. Where are we? There we go. We don't want that. We want it flush with that recess there. So you have to get this side and then push it back a bit. Let's have a look, and the, and, the wind, and the door ones seem to be a looser fit, so you've got to leave this in place as they fall out. Have a look. That's better. Yeah, I can see that's in the recess. That's fine. So we leave that carefully there, and see it sticking out. Where are we? Can you? You can see that. You can see that there. It is sticking out slightly above the surface. You want it like that. 
Right, so I'm not going to do any more of those. I'm now going to, there's three of it, just, just as a taster. I'm now going to glue them in. Oops, don't hit the camera. Now, the way I do this glue and glaze stuff, you can just about see here. Uh, I'd use a, often use this for soup, it's just a jam jar, well, a pate jar or something. Oh, there is it. Oh, too far out, let's go back out. Right, well, what I do is I turn these things upside down, and that's dished, which most jam jars are, but you don't want a high one, you can knock it over. So I put that there, and I can put super glue in there, or in this case, the glue and glaze stuff in there. I'll just make a little puddle, and it can't run away, and you don't waste much. And it dries quite quickly, this stuff, so you don't want to... And I don't do it like this, I know there's a special end, as per the diagram there, it's in my box of stuff somewhere, I don't know where it's gone. And I don't risk pressing because it may suddenly spurt right out and I don't want to happen. So, I have two options to do this. End of the cocktail stick. Or, one of the relatively recent new, more high-tech products on the market. One of these things, actually designed for super glue. And they've got like a little fibre, it looks like a miniature bulb brush basically. Can't see it like that. Now, what was that black card? It might make it stand out. Now, will the camera focus on it or not? It's been a... No, it doesn't want to. You can see little fibres on the end. This is the smallest one and it's made by. This is what they look like. Let's put it that way around. Micro brush. Apparently, it's Irish. This is the fine, fine size one. They do some slightly larger ones, but not much use. It's just it's the little things you want. A bit bigger things aren't a problem, it's the little ones. And there, uh, you can dip them in super glue. And you can reuse them if you wipe the glue off while it's still wet. So what I'm going to try with this, I'll try, I'll try it with cocktail stick first. That's how I did the first one. And I suggest the glue, dip it in the glue. So it's a little bit on it. And just carefully support both hands. I've done that one. These two. Just run it up the edge. Just overlap. Not by much. Avoid going over it. It is quite clear. Just like that. It just touches the edge. And it won't notice. And the bottom. You don't want to pick one of these coaches up off of your layout. And suddenly your fingers make the glue or make the windows pop back in again. No, it's not the end of the world because you can take the body the, the body off and deal with it. But make sure it's just on the edge there. I'm touching the plastic. Up the edge like that. That's it. All right, the door. Is easier because it's sticking up so it's got a land this is the edge that you can stick to so you don't have to overlap it at all just run it up like that and forms a fillet of glue it touches the edge which will give a stronger bond than the other one I think I don't recommend putting the glue on the other side from the outside because you'll see it because it's quite glossy this stuff I think the back you can see that yeah, I should bring it around here a bit, shouldn't I? Maybe I should zoom in. I don't know, can we zoom in? Get it over there a bit, right over there a bit. You see. Okay. If it does go on the glass a little bit, don't worry about it. It is quite clear, this stuff. Hence, it's, that's what it's designed for. In glazing, and there you go, like that. It forms a fillet around it. Now, the other one I'm going to try for the first time. I want the glue off the cocktail stick, put it over there, and I'll try this thing. Ooh, can you see it now? And try the, 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 that window, Let's see if this is any easier. Probably more controllable, I don't know. Yeah. 
seems quite good. Get along the bottom. Just touching the glass, there's no point in doing it if it doesn't touch the actual plastic, uh, the transparency. That's the term used in aerospace. That's what cockpit cut, cockpits on jet fighters are called. I don't call them cockpits that covers, they call them transparency. At one point my company used to have a division that made those at Luton Airport. Lucas Transparencies, I think they were called. So yeah, that's actually very good this thing. Worth the money spending on them. That's much neater. Like that. Oh yeah. So there you go, chaps. One of these things. Oh, I'm talking. I can't even see it. Very good. Like that. Now, don't leave the glue on there. Just go straight onto your bit of tissue paper and wipe it off. Because that works even with super glue. And the fibres still stay as fibres. I can't believe that. There's a bit of crap on there. Let's take that off. Yeah. I want to give it a wash and a bit of water just to quickly. Alright. So, I will pause. I don't know how long this will last. Quick pause. Alright. I, after the pause, or during the pause, I fitted the other oh, man, three, where are we? Three windows. That one, no, that one was a right mare my short for nightmare it didn't fit and I had to get a file out um, needle file flat one and take a bit off the ends to make it go in and then clamp it with some pliers to force it in so hopefully it hasn't damaged anything but oh, it looks all right paints all right so the glue's been done as you can, you know, you can see and we go close, close up and see that that you got to get that light in there Oh, no, where is it? Ugh. I'll do that one. That one's easy to get. Let's do in focus near enough. Oh, as you can see, the old glue and glaze stuff almost totally d disappears. So that, that proves it's pretty clear, isn't it? Can't see it at all. I well, probably could if the light hit it right, but I can't do that. The other body side up here is in the way for the light to get at it. Anyway, so... That's all of the windows on one side, which is good enough for this video to give the impression. So I will now carefully remove the masking tape as a starter. And I'll peel it sideways, so not to pull on it. I don't want it pulling it, just in case. Take them off one at a time. Let's hope this works. It's one of the doors. They're the troublesome ones, they are. Troublesome trucks. Where are we? Getting down here. There's a double layer I put here when I clamped it with the pliers. To force it in the aperture. It was really tight, so that one's not coming out, I hope. That one's actually taken the, the glaze film off with it, that one. That's because I want it as I was. These are not sharp bladed, so I won't scratch the paint on doing that. You want them sharp, but not sharp. Right, let's start with this end then, and we take these glazing things off. Let's get it light right now. You can see the end and get at it without having to get your fingernail in. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. That's clean, shiny for you. Yeah, not bad, isn't it? I think. Okay, oops. Get rid of that little bit. The next one, see? Do it. Doing that first. Makes it easy, doesn't it? So far. Going to be a troublesome one. Bound to be somewhere. Along to this one. Oh, 
Oh, don't want my finger on it, do I? On the inside. That was a troublesome one, and you can see some dirty bits in there. I have to be carefully wiped off, but not with meths. So there we go. That looks not. Oh, hang on, it is. Well, there you go. You can see it now. See the nice shiny on, on the glaze. In fact, yeah, what looks like dirt is actually so clear. Oops, you're looking through it onto the grey foam here, which I thought was specks of dirt. It's not. So I'll zoom out again now, back to normal, if I can get that to work. There we go, getting the light. And that's it, those sparkles as I rotate in the light. Good job. Yeah, that definitely looks more modern. That one's got dirt in it, that one. I can see that one. Don't know if you can, but I have to deal with it. Oh, that's good, that's a good job. So, technique involved in putting these things in the video but I think that's pretty good better than probably the back one which I assume actually uses the main line mold to, uh, to make their version of this I doubt, I doubt if they got this type of glazing anyway so there we go I'll probably provide some stills of the coach completely back together again maybe on a bit of track at the end of this video if I find out how to do that I haven't ever done that before but well, another learning curve Okay, so thank you for watching. Let's turn it around that way. There we go. Here's a pan down the side of the coach or van to show the reflections in the window so you can see the flushness to the bodywork.